You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. Oh my god hi welcome back to the rachel laforce show <laughs> i'm rachel laforce and this is my show for a podcast of any other name would be harder to google oh this is a spiritual podcast for me a comedian because healing is hilarious you're right uh I'll, I'll tell you what nobody is funnier than the universe so we should all just give up and go home i'm really excited about uh today's episode i think that uh, it's something that's really been on my mind a lot, something I've been like a skill I've been working on. And I just wanted to take, I wanted to take a minute for all of us to round table. I have a quick fireside chat about it. Okay. Stay with me. Okay. So today's episode is called, uh, playing at the edge of failure. Okay. And how this started was you guys know I'm on this fit and famous journey by 40 and Often, you know, I feel like I go through long periods of integration where I don't feel very spiritually connected or really I'm not even taking the energy, I guess, to like connect every day because I feel like I'm just going to keep getting the same answer, right? If I'm like, what am I supposed to do next? They're like, the work that you're avoiding. And I'm like, okay, but like, what's next? And they're like, the work that you're avoiding. So I'll go through periods where I don't really make an effort to like spiritually connect and however I define that, right? Whether that's meditation or even they're walking or, you know, anything like that. Like, I'm just like, let's let it play out. And because typically whenever I get to the point where I'm like, okay, now I feel like I'm walking blind, I get some sort of download, right? Which really is those kind of, the universe is really just playing like a giant game of like Hansel and Gretel, right? Like they're just like, keep coming. Um, Hansel, Hansel and Gretel, Hansel, dealer's choice. Um, and the other day I, all of a sudden I heard, uh, get loud. And I was like, Whoa, Whoa, that's new. And it signaled for me what my biggest fear has always been where, Okay, here's where this conversation is about to di diverge in three different places, okay? So stay with me. A lot of times what happens, we've talked about this in the, the self-sabotage episodes, but when you're doing something different often or like you think you're trying again at something, whether that's dating, starting a business, uh, you know, moving your body, like whatever it is for you, right? Getting back into therapy, Um going back to school, how many, she wants to make everybody feel included. Um, like whatever that is, often the reason why it doesn't work out is because we may be trying something new, but we're going in again, doing it the exact same fucking way that we've done it before. And we're like, but why is it not working? And it's like, cause you're doing the same things that you were doing. And so you're going to keep blocking your blessings cause you're not doing it with either, whether that's full intention, clear mind, alignment, whatever. Right. And so for me, that relates to, you know, this, again, this fit and famous, let's talk about the famous part where, uh, you know, a, did a couple of movies, did a, did a little bit of TV, but I honestly believe that a lot of the reason why, when I was even in those big rooms, taking those general meetings, the reason it didn't work for me was I didn't, I didn't think I deserved to be there. Now that wasn't what I was thinking at the time or saying I knew, I did know there was a part of me that knew that I was struggling with like self-worth or whatever else, but it's like, I was always showing up like, oh my God, I can't believe that like they would want to be here, which seems so counter because I was doing the work, right? To pitch to Comedy Central, you have to have a show to pitch them. So clearly I did that part. But that's why we talk about like the work is not enough, talent's not enough. That's why, you know, you'll see people that you may think are far less talented than you doing the exact same thing you wanted to fucking do. Because guess what? They, they think that they deserve to be there, Right. And so what I found was, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
am I going to do that same little sneaky bitch and I'm going to do that same thing all over again and be like, oh, I'm getting fit and famous or, oh, look, I'm starting these businesses. Oh, but I'm still not going to share it as though it's worthy because there's a part of me that, well, no longer, but when I was making this discovery within myself where it was like, oh, but you're still, there's still some sliver of you, even though it's gotten smaller and smaller and smaller, right? There's still some part of you that's like, oh, this is for other people or other people are going to win and whatever that means. And so this idea of like, you have to get so close to playing to the edge of failure that you don't really give a fuck if you win or lose because it's not about that anymore. It's now like, sorry, I'm laughing as I'm knowing what I'm about to say to you because it seems so ridiculous and like quasi embarrassing, but also like it's the fucking truth. But it's like, it doesn't matter if you win or lose anymore because like, fuck that. Like now you're doing it for like the most true intention, which is like to prove it to yourself. Like now when, like when you show up for self, like clear the decks. Okay. Because it's like you, you will be able to get to where you're going so fucking fast. Like I hope that you're able to keep up with yourself because the, you don't, you don't care. So you're not scared about making mistakes. You're not scared about how you're going to look. You're not scared. It's like, you just go and do it. And I could feel myself where I was still like, well, I don't want to share like this part of the journey because it's not attractive enough yet or it's not this or something. It's like, then you're not sharing a journey. Do you hear me? If you wait for it to be where you're thin again or you're this again or you've built all these things, then it's not fucking interesting. It's not fucking interesting. Oh, you're somebody else on the internet that's like, look at, here's what I ate in a day. No one gives a shit. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. They don't. We don't need another example of somebody who's figured it out, but they're not telling us anything real. Who cares? Right? And so for me, it was this feeling where I was like, again, when I heard that and it was like, get loud. And I was like, whoa. Like, it was almost like it came in loud because there was a truck. It was like 1-800-GET-LOUD or something. I don't know what it was for, but all I saw was get loud. And it, you know, if you've ever seen a sign or something, you know, it's for you. It like comes in like a Mack truck. And I saw it and I was like, whoa. And then I could like heal it, it, like hear it and, and almost like feel it in my body too, where I was like, oh, holy shit. Like that's for me. And I was like, whoa, really? And they're like, yeah, it's time. Like if you're doing this, get loud, get active, keep doing it. Right. Because I am still guilty of always being the person that I'm like, okay, well, I got my macros today. So I guess I'm like, I'm skinny again. Right. Or, you know, where it's like, okay, I posted two videos, like a million people follow me now. And I'm really working to get in the place where I'm like, now I do it for me because I trust where I'm going and I don't need to have it figured out. I'm playing close to failure. I'm building these businesses. And again, I'm talking all about me because A, that's my experience, but I'm going to trust that A, by me sharing that I'm doing something that's scary, it reminds you that maybe the thing you want to do isn't so fucking scary, right? And you're capable of doing it. And it's also a teaching tool. So I just, my inner dialogue that's like, don't only talk about yourself. You know, they don't want to hear that. I just, I needed to share that, okay? Um, and so... That is where I'm at with all of this, which is like, okay, if we're going to do it, it's going to be for us and we're not going to keep digging up the seed and looking at it because it's like when I'm playing close to failure because like that's the only way we, we fucking play now. Like I'm not here to play safe. I'm not here. Like I, I feel so grateful, the sidebar, for the stability that my family brings me. Like if I would be perfectly frank, like the boredom some days of like, get up, feed your kids. Okay. Take them to school. Okay. Go to work. Okay. Come home, get your kids, go for a walk, have connection time. Okay. Put them to bed, have connection time with your husband. Okay. Go to bed. Like, and maybe you're single right now and you want all those things. And it's like, okay, really like go fuck yourself. That's boring. But I'm just saying no matter what phase of life you're in. Okay. There's always, <laughs> there's always something else that seems like it's going to be the thing, but I just share that of like the monotony, right? Sometimes is is hard for me, but I'm so grateful for the stability of that because I know that the only things that truly matter are under the same roof as me. And everything else is just an experiment. That's it. 
It's like the only thing that matters is that my kids are safe, that my husband is safe, my, my parents are healthy, and I'm healthy. That's it. It's literally the only thing that matters. And everything else is an experiment. So I can then live in that vibration, live in that reality. And when we live in that place, you're able to like flirt with your life. I mean, how fucking attractive is the person who doesn't need you to take them home at the end of the night? Oh my God, they're so fucking hot. Are you kidding? And there's, there's magnetism in that. There's magnetism. I talk about this all the time of being the person who's willing to leave money on the table. Playing close to the edge of failure. It doesn't matter if you like me or not. It doesn't matter if you want to come on this journey or not. You know, making such a grand statement as I'm getting fit and famous by 40 is a very grand statement. It's also kind of sexy. It's a big promise, right? That's promising a grand transformation. And my only job in order to reach some sort of success in any of that is to just do the work. And when you're also playing to that, that edge of failure, you're no longer consumed with how it has to work, that it has to work a certain way, right? Like when I go back and think of evidence, and I'm sure there's some in your life as well, when like I go back and look at the evidence of, excuse me, every time I didn't know how something was going to work out, right? My husband and I, we get pregnant. We're in like a two bedroom apartment in LA. I'm like, how are we going to make this work? Um, sadly at the same time, my brother-in-law was going through a divorce. He has this full townhouse in the city and he came to us and he's like, Hey, would you ever consider living with me? There's all this space. You could have the primary room. There's a nursery. It was a much safer location. Like we've got, I mean, everything that you could have wanted at the time. And I now I never would have been like, you know what I bet will happen. I'm going to plan all this out. I bet you my brother-in-law is going to go through a, a sad divorce and then I'm going to be able to move like all of the ways. And then also for him where it was like, you know, the help and the support and the love that he needed that we were able to provide that for him. Like the idea that you somehow are going to be able to control the outcome or it's like, the, like let the universe figure that part out. Like let them have to navigate that. Right. And so when you let go of the micromanaging part and all you have to do is the daily deposits, it makes it so much easier because that's like the big, yeah, I can feel all of that stress leaving the right-hand side of my body right now. Um, so much I have to like let my, my arm hang because my physical body has been holding on to so much stress because it's like, okay, you have to figure this part out and you have to figure this part out and you have, and... stop, 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 stop. There's a difference between doing the work and frankly, doing really fucking hard work, okay? And also doing enough each day. Doing hard work, working hard doesn't mean hustle culture that you don't ever sleep and you're not eating and like, that's not the vibe. But to accomplish the things you really want, whether that's healing some childhood trauma, finding the love of your life, like what, whatever these things are building and, you know, a business, like whatever those things are for you, like it really does take a lot of you because it's not just the actual physical work that you're doing, but it's the emotional and the internal work. And you have to have both of those components firing at all cylinders at the same time. And sometimes we have to put one down to do the other and then, you know, and vice versa. And it's really this rhythm versus, you know, your routine, which I'm talking about here soon. But I think just, <clears throat> excuse me, what I really want to offer you is what would it look like for you in your own life to play close to the edge of failure. And I'm using the word play on purpose because we don't need to be scared anymore. We already know. Like that's the gift of being awake. And why are we still making it hard on ourselves? Rachel, why are you still making it hard on yourself? Like if you know, especially it's like you, you know, any of us you identify as like awake or doing self-development or that you have a higher power and however you define that for yourself. Like, I would say I am so sure, like nothing could convince me that I'm not connected to something higher than me, right? And then at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but are you sure? Like, are you sure it's going to work out? Like, oh my God, how rude, how rude, right? Like, 
That's why you're overworked. That's why your nervous system is breaking. That's why you're tired. That's why you're still trying to micromanage it. Because you cannot separate and release that all you need to do is play at the edge of failure. Remember that all of this is a grand experiment and that you get to just play and play hard, right? My only job is to count my macros, get my steps in, get my water in, eat well, right? Move my body. That's all I got to do to get fit. I don't have to keep checking scales or measuring myself or like, no, do, 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 do. And also that's not a part of what this fitness journey is this time around. The goal is not thin. So people like me, that's an old story. That's not what we're doing. We're getting fit and strong as fuck so that we can run around and have the energy to chase two young kids so that we have a physical body that can handle the amount of creativity and frankly, stress. I go from meeting to meeting to meeting all day long and the ability to do that and be present because anybody can hustle. Anybody can move too fast. That's not the goal. It's endurance. And the only way I'm able to do that is by making these daily deposits. So that's something, that endurance element, that's something that we will see over time. You can't check in on that. In the same way of like, is it working? Is this fame thing working? Are people understanding? It's like, it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. And we may never know. And maybe that won't work out. And then it'll bring me to something else. But I refuse to spend any more energy like thinking about it and worrying about it when that energy needs to go towards being creative, being open to creative inspiration, being open to creative collaborations, being open to what that elevation looks like. And the only way we do that is by being brave. And honestly, it's brave enough to like not keep checking the seed. Like, can you be brave enough to trust yourself and to trust that the universe has your back and all you need to do is show up and play close to failure and take risks and believe in yourself and we'll get to the other side. Like, let it not be so hard. Can you just like, let it not be so hard? I, I, I don't know yet. I'm working on it. I'm asking you. Okay. Feel free to let me know how you feel. Uh, but that's it. That's all I've got for you. It's a really, you know, tight episode, but I, in a, in a tight message, frankly, but I just think that there's so much power in this and there's so much power. And like, I always say, it's like, get caught trying, get caught trying. Like the amount of things that I've had to do with getting these business loans, applying for them, stretching to see if these are things that we can do. I have to get caught trying. I have to get caught not entirely knowing what I'm doing. It doesn't mean that I don't deserve to be there. It just means I haven't done it. Okay. Like, you know, when I look at my son and he's trying something new, I'm not going to be like, oh, what are you, an idiot? It's like, no, he's three years old. He's fucking trying for the first time. Can you let him try? You know? And so it's like, I say the same thing to you of like, you know, just can you relax and allow your development, allow your transformation to be easy because you're in a place of play and you're in a place of trust. All right. That's it. That's all I've got for you. If you have not, okay, real talk, don't turn it off. Don't turn the podcast off, okay? If you have not left me a podcast review, will you go do that? Because I feel like, honestly, like if we're friends, right? We're friends. I have given you so much of me and I'm only asking this one thing of you. So I feel like it would be super easy for you just to pop on over to Spotify, pop on over to Apple, okay? Okay. And can you leave your girl a review? All right. That we're getting ready to do. Um, we, we're going to set out a big podcast tour next year. And so, um, sadly, this is just the business part and like that shit matters, you know? So I show up for you. I would be so incredibly grateful if you show up for me, if you can go leave a review, I would uh, say whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be, you know, positive, you know, just it, dealer's choice. But I would really love if you could do that for me. Go ahead and check out all the show notes. I'm still, uh, we've got so much coming up. If you did not check out our, the start of our transformation journey together, joining the pack, you can still go and grab that free recording for free and the free workbook. If you are here in the Atlanta area, I have a bunch of events coming up so you can check that out. If you've not started following Scoot Orbit Studios, can you go and give it a follow? Also, the podcast has its own social media. All of that is in the show notes. Please take advantage. Take a look at that. It's such an easy way to support me and really means the world. So, um, yeah, go ahead. Get out there. Support your girl. Support your girl. All right. Hey, I love you so much. You're doing great work. Keep doing it. 
let the seeds just let them sit, let them sit. All right. And let's, let's transform in real time. All right. Love you. Mean it. Time, weather, and-